Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. This is the post-fight review for Joe Joyce versus Christian Hammer. Joe Joyce absolutely grinds Hammer into the dust, and I guess it largely went as people expected. That Hammer taking a lot of punishment would ultimately get worn down and taken out. And that's what happened. So we'll cover the action briefly, and then we'll move on to some of the comments from Joyce after the fight, because it's worth sort of uh, picking over the bones of those, along with Frank Warren saying he'll be uh, out in September. But there's a couple of red flags, and I think, you know, one of them is going to be, I'm going to talk about his defense. But in terms of this fight, which was a tune-up, it was the first time we'd seen Joe Joyce in a year. More recently, he's been injured, he had a broken wrist, so he'd been rehabbing it in the first part of this year. But he didn't look like he was held back by that, looks fully recovered from what we saw in this fight. So coming forward, doing his juggernaut thing, he just tried to um, overwhelm Christian Hammer. First couple of rounds, it wasn't having maybe the optimal effect because he was eating a lot of clean shots. And I said to a few people ahead of the fight uh, in different comments that I thought this could end up resembling the Carlos de Calm and Berman Stavern fights to some extent. That those guys we saw, and we saw this with Hammer, trying to let sh uh, big shots go and catching Joyce with stuff, but ultimately it wouldn't work. Joyce would just keep coming. And those first couple of rounds, he was eating big right hands, clean right hands by Christian Hammer for fun. And that's got to be demoralizing for your opponent when the guy just walks through and keeps coming and it looks like there is no effect. And that happened to those fights, to Carmen and Stavern, and it happened in this one. And you saw by round three, Christian Hammer was starting to look a little bit weary from the pace that Joe Joyce was setting. So defense aside, the rate that Joe Joyce fights at, and he is a juggernaut, he's got a great engine, it really puts his opponents under pressure because Hammer has, had exerted a lot of energy throwing big shots, but just the energy and the pressure that he was under from Joyce was taking a toll. And it looked like he was wearing down. I was thinking, this is not going to go too much longer. And by the end of the third round, it looked like Christian Hammer, because um, the shot came round, and initially it looked like it might have sort of been round near the back of the head or the neck or the shoulder. Uh, but it didn't even, on the replay, look like it really landed. It looked like Christian Hammer just needed a break, put a knee down just through exactly exhaustion because he looked really spent and that was the moment I think many of us we probably saw okay this is all downhill from here and it was Joe Joyce in the fourth round coming forward just clubbing away the body work was pretty good throughout the fight he was landing a lot of shots and it was a body shot that had Christian Hammer down for the second time uh, the third time he was just clubbing Christian Hammer he goes down and another body shot ended the fight Christian Hammer took it and then he just backs up and starts to take a knee and the referee had seen enough. So Joe Joyce, another win, another juggernaut type performance, eating punches for fun from his opponent early on, but ultimately walking through them and uh, wearing his opponent into the dust. So Joe Joyce showed again a good engine. The defense wasn't great, and I guess we'll come to that red flag a little bit later because you can't keep doing that against actual legit punches. Christian Hammer is not a big puncher, but in terms of um, the comments after the fight, we'll start there. So Joe Joyce, he had this uh, interesting sort of rain and raincoat analogy, or, or should I say umbrella analogy, when he was asked about you took some shots in round one, round two. And he said it's like having an umbrella, but then if you don't have it, you get a bit wet. And certainly um, Joyce for those first few rounds was getting a bit wet, taking big right hands for fun. But he said, look, I just then warmed into the fight because he did get a little bit more defensively responsible. Uh, but obviously the defense is a real big question mark. Uh, but he said, look, he's a tough guy. And uh, he also talked about being in the mix and he's looking for big fights. Frank Warren, his promoter, said he will be back on the 24th of September. And he also re repeated what is not true. He said he's the mandatory challenger. And 
I just want to repeat again, there's a difference between being the mandatory and the number one contender. Joyce is the number one in the WBO, but if he was truly mandatory, then he would have been dropped from other sanctioning bodies. He's still holding the WBC silver title. He's still ranked in the WBC. He's ranked in other sanctioning bodies. If he was named as the mandatory by the WBO, which he has not been, he would be taken out of those other um, sanctioning bodies. Let's face it, they're keeping his options open. And Frank Warren has sway with the WBO, so he's unlikely to want to close off his options just to the WBO just yet, because he's very high in the WBC and obviously has that silver title, which he's still fighting and um, retaining. But in terms of that red flag of uh, the defense, imagine if that was Deontay Wilder landing a big right hand on Joe Joyce and Joyce took it. You know, th those sorts of power punches from legitimate punches I don't care who you are, you can't eat those clean for fun against guys with legitimate power. Those sorts of um, punches would end Joe Joyce at a higher level. So, I mean, he talked about he will try to retool some things and be more responsible defensively at a higher level. But we have seen him with no regard for defense or just the defense is not great in terms of that left hand. He's just not keeping it up. He's getting caught with uh, shots over the top, looping right hands, straight right hands. Uh, and someone like Deontay Wilder. I mean, remember, the, uh, Dominic Brazil talked about his chin being so good ahead of that fight with Deontay Wilder. And uh, Brazil, in some ways, who's a tall, lumbering guy, slow, uh, he thought that he could stand up to it and he got absolutely obliterated. So you can't do that against uh, top tier guys uh, and better fighters than Hammer. I mean, let's face it, Christian Hammer is washed at this point. We can only give Joe Joyce so much credit for this win. It'll, as I said ahead of the fight, you can only polish this turd up so much. This was a tune up. It was for some activity. Christian Hammer, his best days, well gone. If this was Hammer from six or seven years ago, yeah, sure, that would be an impressive win, but it's not. But Hammer, a smaller fighter who's relatively easy to find. He's not that fleet of foot. He's not a big puncher. He often can be quite negative. Well, this is a guy that was tailor-made to, to get a pasting here, and he did. So let's not go over the top and say because Joyce beats Christian Hammer that he can take on and beat the elite of the division. But even though he's slow and obviously with at times hittable, he's a problem. His engine is very good. He's got a good chin and that'll take you a long way in the heavyweight division. But he's got to get more defensively responsible. I mean, they're talking about September 24th, looking for a big opponent, that sort of stuff. Let's wait and see. I'm not optimistic it's going to be a big name. I hope Joyce gets some big fights because soon to be 37 and you can't underestimate that. I've always said heavyweights do their best work in my view generally before the age of 35. There are some exceptions. Maybe Joyce is going to be one of those exceptions but the clock is ticking. Father Time is undefeated. Joe Joyce is leaving a lot of himself in the gym when he's training and obviously taking these sorts of um, shots like he did against Hammer. It's not nothing. It's going to take something. So soon to be 37, looking, waiting, wanting for a big fight. I hope he gets it because I want to see how far Joe Joyce can go. But what's going to happen? Who's he going to fight? Parker fight's not happening. Dillian White seemingly does want a tune-up next. Uh, so what is Joe Joyce going to do in the interim? He's still got the British title. He's been holding on to that. He's got these other trinkets in WBO, WBC. He's kind of just in a bit of limbo. And that's disappointing for him. But when he does step up, hopefully him and his trainer Ishmael Salas can iron some of his defensive frailties out. And we have seen that they can game plan, that they can uh, bring um, a good strategy into a fight um, against Daniel Dubois. It was a very simple strategy, circle and move, but it took away Daniel Dubois, some of his best punches, and he was reliant on the jab. We didn't really see the jab so much in this fight, uh, but we know Joyce does have it. He can use it. It can be a good weapon. And we know he can fight to a game plan at the higher level. He will certainly need to. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.